Hey, Nathan, I heard about this great new uh, regenerative thing. Uh, it, it extends your life by like a hundred years. And, you know, I was thinking we could actually both do this and extend our lives by a hundred years, keep recording these podcasts for a hundred years. That is, if you could stand to deal with me for another century. Oh, Tyler, another century, another 10 centuries of podcasting, right? <laughs> Unless you're going to force me to watch MCU stuff and Baby Driver, <laughs> things like that. And then I want whatever procedure it is that ends your life immediately. <laughs> right. Yes. Then I'm done. <laughs> Hello and yes. welcome to Twilight Zone Tuesdays. My name is Nathan. And I'm Tyler. Uh, so this is a series in which we are looking at 13 of some of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes. Um, and we're doing a, a brief discussion about each one and we're releasing them on, you guessed it, Tuesdays. And so we speak for about 13 minutes. We set the timer for 13 minutes and um, yeah, and then, and then we have a conversation about it. So this week's episode is The Tradens, which was from season three, episode 31. And this first aired on April 13th, 1962. If you have not seen this episode, it is well worth watching. In part, and it works on its own, but in part, this really was one of the episodes that inspired Jordan Peele to make the film Get Out. So mm -hmm. if you've watched Get Out and if you like it, then you should check out the episode that kind of inspired it, at least like provided the germ of the idea for Get Out. Because um, yeah. Peele is definitely doing different stuff with the concept yeah. uh, than this episode. But it's it's a fun episode to to think about um, in terms Absolutely. of what it turns into. Um, yeah. All right, so we do have a sponsor for this week's podcast. So our sponsor is the New Life Corporation. Listen, folks, if you have thought about extending your life in some way and you thought, well, it seems very difficult, that's going to involve diet, exercise, lifestyle choices, Things like that, you know, regularly seeing a doctor. Um, no, forget it. Money can solve anything. What you really need is you need to have a new body. Forget about taking care of the one that you have right now. Basically, just use it as long as you can until it looks like it's going to crap out on you. And then what you want to do is you want to take your life savings and you want to trade that all in for a newer, younger body. And that should basically fix every problem you ever have in your life ever. The New Life Corporation, there's definitely something wrong with your body and only money can fix it. Contact them today. <laughs> yes, I am so thankful to have them as a sponsor. <laughs> Me too. I love that slogan too. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we all know that there is. Their, their <laughs> bodies that they have, that they will put you into, are perfection. <laughs> That's right. And you know, look at me walking around in this thing like a jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, got a small little blemish. Ah, no worries. These bodies don't have those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll discard with this one. Yep. <laughs> all right, folks, I hope you enjoy. There is a fifth discussion beyond that which is known to man. It is a discussion as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between anger and joy, between silence and outrage, and it lies between the pit of Nathan's fears and the summit of Tyler's knowledge. This is a discussion of intellectual properties. It is a podcast which we call Ignore the Bell. All right, so we're talking about the episode, The Trade Ends, episode three, uh, or sorry, season three, episode 31 from the original Twilight Zone series. This was written by Rod Serling, an original Rod Serling uh, teleplay. So, and I had mentioned it in the intro, this did inspire Jordan Peele to write the film um, and then direct uh, the film Get Out, which, of mm -hmm. course, everybody, it seems like everybody knows Get Out because it's yeah. an incredibly popular movie. And so... This one, it doesn't have any of the 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 major um, themes that that Peel focuses on. Um, mm. Specifically, like they don't go into like you have this elderly couple who go into this corporation because you know he's sick and she is also you know getting on in years. Even though I don't know if you notice this, but they look like 
he's like, how old are you? And he's like, 70 something? What 79. is it? 79. 79. And she's like, I'm 74. And she looks like she's at least 84. It's kind of surprising of how people back then <laughs> aged. <laughs> and he, yeah. You know what I mean? But then it does the opposite, too, because it's like, look at this 22-year-old guy, and he looked like he was 35. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, what was going on with the way people aged? They just went from being, like, children to being middle-aged to then being elderly, and there was no <laughs> nothing in between. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's just, I think yeah, that's how it used to work. <laughs> it's so weird. And uh, like that's not just makeup. I don't know what that is. But um, mm -hmm. in any case, yeah. uh, so they decide that they're going to trade in their bodies. The fact that this is kind of like a secret thing going on mm -hmm. in the world that people are not fully aware that you can just trade in your body, get a younger body for only $5,000, even in, you know, like 1962, that's still not that much money. And then this is supposed to be futuristic. So yeah. it's like they didn't take, like Sterling didn't take inflation into account whatsoever when he came up with that number. It wasn't right. like 50000 or half a million dollars. It was like $5,000. It's like, just sell your house, sell your car. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you be able to get that money? And wouldn't everybody be doing this? Um, because right. nobody seems to know that these yeah. elderly folks are, are going to do this. Yeah, it, it would be my, um, I guess, uh, assumption that this is a very new thing. I guess. Uh, but, I mean, they do talk about, you know, like, there being, like, a 98% uh, success rate or whatever, so, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, you would think uh, a medical marvel like this would be news. <laughs> right, yeah. But um, somehow it's still fairly underground. And so then the question is whether they're going to trade in their, their bodies and they've only got half of the amount of money because it would be 10000 for the two of them, but they only have $5,000. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, struggling over this. And since he's, a, like, in pain, then the idea is we'll get him to do it first and then eventually then, you know, we'll get the money so that way the the wife can do it as well and she's yeah. horrified by seeing him in this other body and then he goes back to his old one and that's kind of that fixes everything right yeah yeah it's a uh, it's it's a really interesting episode uh i really enjoyed it um uh and i feel like she wasn't really horrified by him being in the new body so much as she was horrified by this idea that he wants to do all of these things and she's mm. like i cannot do all those things because she seems happy at first yeah she's like wow you're so youthful and then he's like yeah we can do all the things that we always wanted to do but couldn't because we were too old and you know and it's like oh yeah every night is going to be honeymoon every day is going to be <laughs> you know, right wedding and it's like oh okay i can't <laughs> yeah coming on a little strong here hon we've been together for 50 years but i don't like you that much <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah um so that that i think uh i i think that that's a really interesting um uh topic and in, in, in discussion there um and then we it's it's really really fascinating because we get like we get this uh sweet ending yeah and for a twilight zone episode that seems really unusual it's it's very strange. The ending is very strange. The implications of this episode are very strange. It's it's certainly not like standard Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't end yeah. with some kind of weird twist ending or some ironic twist to it, something that's unsettling. Instead, it's very yeah. sentimental at the end. Yeah. Uh, and I guess, like, I have multiple questions about this, about the logic of this episode. And so I think that, like, I'm sure that you're right, that her issue is I can't keep up with all mm -hmm. of those things. But isn't the plan that now, especially now that he's younger, that he can just go and work and get this money, you know, as quickly yeah. as possible and then trade in her body? So, yeah, maybe she can't keep up at first, but she eventually will. 
Because, like, right. what is it that horrifies her? Is it this idea that she can't keep up, at least right now? And that the, the nice, sweet, sappy ending is, we're going to die really soon, but at least we'll die together, doing not much of anything. Yeah. Like, that's the sweet, sentimental ending. And I guess what's interesting to me is, and I don't know what Serling's personal beliefs were, but it's interesting how little there is of a discussion of the afterlife Mm, yeah because doesn't that seem as even like even today even in 2020 then you're still talking about the vast majority of the world they are people of faith who do Mm. believe in some kind of higher power and most people do believe in the afterlife and This just seems to be completely absent from the Twilight Zone. And so wouldn't it just be like, well, this life is ending, but there is a new life that we're going to have in heaven that will get right. new bodies. Because this is really what the episode is doing. But it's essentially the a corporation providing what, like, according to the Christian tradition, what Christ offers. Christ is offering eternal life and to have a restored body, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. like... All of those things from this world, all of the fallen nature of man, like the, the the flesh, all of that falls away, and then you get to experience eternity in peace and bliss, and all of this in, in perfect uh, communion with God. That is the the Christian depiction of the afterlife, but it's not like, oh, we shouldn't hang on so closely to this life that we have. That's not the ending of the episode, saying, oh, this life is all there is you know, like, it. I, I'm sorry, it's not saying this life is not all that there is. Right. That we don't need to hold so tightly to this present life. Yeah. That it is okay to let go because we will be reunited even if one of us departs the earth from this fleshy vessel that we exist within. But yeah. there's none of that. <laughs> and it's so yeah. weird that it just never comes up in these episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree entirely. It is very strange because, yeah, that would that would certainly make for a, a much uh, not a better ending, but like a more a, a sweeter ending. You know? A, yeah, because this a, a more... sweet ending is there. He's still really sick. He's still hurting. He's going to die very soon, and she will die probably not too long after that. And they really yeah. can't do anything. And they're like. And that's better. And it's like, yeah. but they, there's you're not pointing to anything actually good on the other side of that. Um, mm-hmm. At least from my perspective. I mean, I, I suppose like for some people who do not believe in the afterlife, that they would say, no, that's a perfectly fine way to end your life. But I don't think that people would. I would, wouldn't, yeah. if you think this life is all there is, wouldn't you say, then take advantage of replacing your body so that way you can live longer. Yeah, you would think. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's uh, there. There's that, it, like especially the time that this episode came out. Mm-hmm. Like it's surprising that there isn't, you know, a discussion of the afterlife or or anything because, yeah, like 2020. Then sure, it's like oh, we're trying to be more, you know, politically correct or trying not yes. to get religion into it. But in the 1960s, like. There wouldn't have been an issue with that at all. Like, and, there's a bigger issue with avoiding that. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is what you get with the Twilight Zone, and then you get it with the original Star Trek series not that long after. Because I think the original Star Trek series aired in, I think, 65, I want to say. Somewhere around there. Yeah, um, around there. Yeah, like maybe look it up while, while I'm talking because I want to get the, the date right. Because the Twilight Zone went until I think something like 1964. And it really was not all that long afterwards that you get Star Trek. And in Star Trek, it is very much a um, a humanistic a, like worldview that religion has essentially disappeared. Um, mm-hmm. That everybody is a rational humanist who, you know they have essentially achieved utopia through science and technology, engineering, and that that has fixed all the problems on earth. And according to like, essentially like the, the, the major belief systems, religious 
uh, religions in the world, then that is not the solution, <laughs> right? <laughs> that there's there's something in the spirit that needs to be addressed, not just mm -hmm. meeting physical needs. But then Star Trek says, hey, there's world peace, everything's fixed because we now have good enough technology to provide for everybody. Because the, the Christian tradition would say, yeah. but man is still dealing with a fallen spirit. And so it's just, it's saying, we're going to be completely rational humanists, and we're not even going to comment on religion and differences within religions and, and people of different faiths. None of that's going to be an issue anymore because our technology is good enough that that's all fine. And everybody's kind of moved beyond that, right? It's this atheist um, belief that as humanity progresses, religion falls away. Like Christopher Hitchens, who is a uh, atheist um uh, uh, advocate, then he really puts forth the, you know, the belief system of atheism to, you know, he, he says like, that's essentially what happens as civilizations progress, they become less religious. And Roddenberry seemed to be doing that. And it kind of seems like Serling, I don't know if Serling is doing it too, but all these futuristic episodes, mm -hmm. there, there's never really, and I'm trying to think, when do we ever get a, a commentary about religion in the Twilight Zone? Right. Yeah, I haven't seen enough of it to uh, to really say, but it's it certainly doesn't seem uh, there. Well, there is at least one episode which uh, talks about like the angel of death, um, who is who is there for one person. But yeah, it's uh, watch the howling I, man with the devil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that wasn't so, written by Serling. That was written by Charles Beaumont. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I don't know about that episode with the angel of death if that one uh involved uh, uh, was written by by serling or not mm -hmm. um so yeah that that's really interesting um to think about um oh man um no oh, sorry we haven't even really talked about the episode but <laughs> <laughs> yeah no and it's uh it, yeah we we should move on but it is just it's such an interesting uh exclusion <laughs> to not yeah, have it I don't be know brought what up to, in any way <laughs> yeah that there's not any they never like it just it seems like it never gets addressed and i'm um, like you're bringing up all of these really serious questions and they seem like important metaphysical questions mm -hmm. right because they are yeah. metaphysical questions but then the religious worldview is never presented as having anything to offer and not even rejecting it. It's just like it doesn't exist. Yeah. And that just seems like such a weird omission mm -hmm. of why don't you ever talk about this? And I don't know if there was a reason maybe CBS didn't want religion to be openly discussed on television because wasn't Star Trek on CBS as well? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So I, I don't know if maybe it was executives who are just like that's controversial so uh -huh. don't bring it up because you know i mean whether you're talking about catholics and protestants and all of the different denominations within protestantism that some people would say it's just going to be controversial if you say anything about religion whatsoever right. uh, but if you just present these metaphysical questions without ever offering the religious response to that at all then we at least avoid a controversy. But I'm like, but don't you kind of generate a controversy by ignoring it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would think. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, by the way, I should mention, uh, the original Star Trek series did start in 1966. Ah, oh, yeah. I'm humiliated. I was a year off. <laughs> 66 until 69. So. <laughs> right. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that, that to me is like the really interesting part of this episode that that never really seems to come up and it just seems like such a weird omission. And then the other thing, this whole idea of how, how much of our identity is associated with our bodies. And that seems like something that doesn't really get addressed because at mm. least me watching this episode, I look at it and I'm so unsettled by the idea that I would be living in somebody else's body. Yeah. And I think yeah, I, I most people would feel that way. That that's a nightmare scenario. Uh, yeah. I've heard of it before where people who have had really terrible accidents and they have to get like facial reconstruction surgery and, and stuff like that, 
that it can be very difficult psychologically to recover from that because when you look in the mirror, then you don't see your face anymore. Mm. Um, and it's just, that can be really upsetting because it's just, it's like this disassociation from your body that right. I'm like, oh, you've got such a great concept here. And it's like, it's going to go in this direction. There's going to be this disassociation with your body. And you're going to be like so upset by this that you want to go back to your old body, even if it means dying, even if you don't believe in the afterlife, but you just, you can't handle being in this thing that feels foreign to you. Um, yeah. But no. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, th this is a perfect example of one of these episodes where it has such a great concept yeah. Like, absolutely brilliant concept, but there are so many different ways that they can go with it that, you know, Rod Serling clearly picked one idea yes, that he wanted he to follow, and, yes. and that's it. And that works for this one episode. It and I'm I'm really glad that Jordan Peele <laughs> picked yes. that concept and said, well, what about if we explore it from this perspective? Yep. Um, and there's still so many different ways that you can approach this concept um yeah so it's it's really really brilliant uh that way and and so it is kind of frustrating watching this episode because you're like there's so much more that you could do yeah but at the same time this episode is so satisfying in and of itself <laughs> that's exactly it yeah you you hit the nail on the head because that is 100 what this is is like a good twilight zone episode this presents more questions than can possibly be resolved within the episode that there's yeah. just so many questions that are brought up from this high concept idea that you go wow that that it, you know means that you have this implication and this implication and this implication it's like yeah we can't address all of those we can't answer those questions we'll only yeah. really deal with one of them so then you get to discuss afterwards and it inspires um so many other stories to come out of this because we were talking off air before about this that with so many original episodes because there's 156 original twilight zone episodes where you look at this and you're just like you know has anybody like done a, come up with a concept specifically within like science fiction and weird fiction and horror that isn't oh yeah the twilight zone did it first right. and it's and it's hard to to not do that because there's so many original concepts here that yeah. open up all these possibilities because at least for me as a as a writer and a creative individual i watch these things and i go ooh that's inspiring this idea now i have this idea now i have this yeah. idea just like what <laughs> jordan peele did and i mean i know he is a big fan of the original twilight zone series and you can see that in the movies that he's now making and mm -hmm. they're not like they're not by any means are they ripoffs. It's no, no, no. <laughs> like like uh, that's not what I'm saying whatsoever. I'm saying he's coming yeah. up with brilliant concepts that it's like there's a little germ of it in the original episode, and then it's like let me take this in a totally different direction. But what a great concept! Yeah, yeah. Because one thing that I uh, kept thinking about when watching this episode, uh, well, of course, was Get Out, and you know, okay, well, where are these bodies coming from? Yeah, and that's clearly what Jordan Peele. Uh, took from right. this episode right <laughs> um, but uh, but the other thing was um, how does this how does this uh, translate in terms of uh, you know the issues of overpopulation which is something that we're dealing with now but wasn't too much of a concern back in the 60s well because... I mean but it, it should have been because Thomas Malthus who's the first person the originator of the the concern over overpopulation I believe he was a 19th century geographer um, okay. And he first came up with the idea of overpopulation. And I know that people were talking about it in the 60s. Okay. All right. Well, that's interesting then. Because, yeah, like, it, at the very least, it's a, I, I would say it's a bigger concern to people nowadays. Oh, yeah. 100%. Uh, <laughs> 100%. Um, yes. And so that's why, like, it really came to my mind of, like, well, if you're extending these people's lives, then all of a sudden you've got people, like, more bodies on the planet. <laughs> that's a problem like you've got to make up for it somehow we're approaching eight billion people on the planet earth right now and if you're saying that don't some... remind me <laughs> <laughs> and if you're saying that like some people are going to just keep living even after their time is up there's like yep. oh dear <laughs> oh and especially if these are 
if they're real bodies that are being exploited because these are like working class people who like sell their bodies or they're being stolen okay that's super interesting and like jordan peele does that with get out and then he adds in all yeah. of these racial politics to it as well which is terrific but then with this one if they're synthetic bodies then it becomes this whole thing of well how many natural resources are we going to have what's this going to do to like climate change and everything yes. else that it's like because yeah. it's already concerning enough when it's like do you know like the rare earth materials that are in like a cell phone and every time <laughs> we like get a new one it's just like that's a finite resource and to make the thing like buzz and what it's doing to central africa and <laughs> you know what i mean it's just like yeah. it's like ah this thing is like contributing to so much bad on the planet and then it's like to create an entirely new body <laughs> for everybody yeah. to just keep replicating this it's like well that seems really awful too this entire yeah. the entire scenario and i guess that's what i think is so interesting about this episode is the entire scenario seems like such a nightmare but the elderly couple in this are just like oh Oh, okay, this is sweet. This is nice. And I'm like, yeah. how are you not screaming right now? <laughs> <laughs> how are you not yeah. shuddering? Because it's so disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I just really want to see, you know, another, like, oh, I want so many films to, uh, to grab this concept and take them in all these different directions, including dealing with overpopulation in a world yes. where it's, you know, you can extend your life by getting a new body and yeah. say that it is a synthetic body. Like, you know, that to me is fascinating. And maybe I'll write that story one day. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe that's the whole point of this is we'll just start yeah. writing like <laughs> original concepts from these things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I wonder if maybe like, because I, I know that we're... we're leading up to you and I having a conversation about the entire Cloverfield universe as like the mm -hmm. cinematic universe that they're very, very different films, but they're all loosely collected together. Yeah. Um, that this episode, like to do an entire like shared right. universe of this, of there's so many ways, there's so many different stories that you could tell just from this one concept and to all kind of have them yeah. loosely collected together. Like it would be such an interesting thing to do. Yeah, that would be fascinating. Oh, man. This, we'll, we'll turn this into a pitch, you know? Yes. <laughs> we'll pitch it to some executive somewhere. Cause... Yeah, that sounds great. Let's pitch it to Jordan Peele. <laughs> he yeah. Could, he's already got the basic, uh, the basis there with, uh, with Get Out. So <laughs> Right. Or even, like, maybe, like, Black Mirror, where if, like, mm, you look at, like, the yeah, Christmas yeah. episode, where it's, like, you could do, like, three stories of this, where it's an hour and a half, right. and, like, three variations on the theme, where it's all within a shared universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right, well, I did want to mention one more thing about this episode, mm -hmm. um, which is the, uh, the, the the poker scene, or yeah. gambling scene. Yeah, um, it's a little... Um, it it works, but I think that it it takes a large portion of the episode length, and it nothing really happens from that other than we get you know all these other people being like, oh, I feel bad for you. Yeah, you know, let's kind of help you out by letting you take home what you brought so that you didn't lose any money and that you'd still be able to save yourself. But, you know, still not be giving up our own money to you. Um, yeah. And that's really interesting. And that honestly could have been an episode in and of itself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just it definitely that whole gambling scene. <laughs> yeah. It is interesting because that's such an interesting inclusion into in this episode that yeah. it, essentially it seems I, I'm wondering like the what Serling was thinking with that. In part, it seemed to be showing his the, this man's efforts to try to earn the money, but he's just incapable in part because of his sickness and because he's elderly. And he just, it's hard to earn that kind of money that quickly. Um, mm -hmm. That he doesn't have any choice. They really are only going to have enough money to get uh, the one body. Yeah. But then it also seems to be serving the purpose of generating sympathy for elderly people who maybe get neglected in our society because mm. we're certainly bad at that um right. unlike many other societies and cultures around the world 
North America in particular and the Western world in general, we're, we're not good at caring for elderly people. Um, yeah. and, and so it seems like don't ignore them and don't, you know, just have a complete lack of, you know, empathy or, or sympathy, yeah. compassion. Don't take for what, advantage of them. Don't even. take advantage of them. Yeah, because elder yeah. abuse is a very real thing. People do that all the time to elderly people. I've kind of like, because I've lived in, you know, before I moved to Florida, then I lived in a community that was mostly a retirement city. Um, a lot of people from the city would move out to to where I was living before. So a lot of seniors there. And then obviously being in Florida and where I'm living in Florida, a lot of seniors are here. And I've noticed the the most invisible people in our society are elderly people. Mm. They just, yeah. people don't notice them. They, they, they really get neglected. And I don't, not even in a rude way, but people just don't notice them. Yeah. Um, and this episode seems to be pay attention, pay attention to what they're going through. Um, and, and be kind and don't take advantage of them. And it's this really interesting subplot that mm -hmm. you have within this episode. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I, I feel like that could have been an episode in and of itself. Yeah. We could have just had the entire poker game. Um, and it didn't even need to be, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get a new body, but just, oh, I'm trying to get money for an operation that I need. Yeah. And that is such a compelling story right there. And that's essentially you know, what it is. It's just, he yeah. needs a procedure an operation because he's so sick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I guess you mm -hmm. could also like look at it and I mean, say like, it's doing something with healthcare. Right. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Sterling was, was doing that intentionally, but it can certainly function in that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it is interesting because we get such a focus on, the on like the piano on that music and i didn't i, I don't know what you know song that the gentleman was yeah. trying to play um i don't know if there's some significance there because you know he's kind of humming it he doesn't really know the yeah. end of the song um yeah so i don't know if that has any real significance um but uh but yeah that just adds to it and we get such a focus on that character who ends up you know, being generous in folding, uh, saying, okay, yeah, yeah, you got me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I don't really know why we get so much of a focus on all of that. Yeah. I don't know either. And that's the, the puzzling thing with Serling when you're looking mm -hmm. at his writing, then, and the only thing that I can think is just, he just had so many great ideas and, and I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but he has so much freedom as a, a television writer that there wasn't a lot of people saying, um, <laughs> does this fit in the episode? Do you know what I mean? I don't know how yeah. much they had what we now associate with like the, the modern writer's room in Hollywood of a mm -hmm. team of writers going through the teleplay together and yeah. commenting and really working through it and somebody will get the the story credit somebody will get the script credit but mm. ultimately there's like a dozen people who really played a significant role including showrunners and then sometimes actors will have a say but i feel like just whatever sterling wanted to put in there ended up in there and i don't know how much he agonized over draft after draft after draft right yeah um if somebody who has done more research into that can comment, that would be helpful because I kind of suspect that it was just like, that's great. That's great. That's great. And then he's just like, there, we're going to do that episode. And they were, but it's kind of puzzling at times where you go, okay, this is all good stuff, but I don't know that this necessarily should all be in the same episode. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, that was all I had to say on this yeah. episode. Um, I'm good. But it, it's such a great episode. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. There's so many questions that come out of this that you just, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it generates a, a really good discussion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Imagine, if you will, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Leave your comments below, and maybe, just maybe, you'll receive a response. All for a channel referred to by many as... Ignore the bell.